welcome to the Excel Cast. I'm your host, Melissa Coppola, and today we're here with Dr. Sara Aliash, um, and she is the Assistant Pro Professor of Entrepreneurship at the University of Victoria in Canada. And today she's here to talk with us a little bit about creative arts entrepreneurship, her research, and also her own creative arts venture in Portugal. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so let's jump right in. Sure. Um, <clears throat> it seems like you wear a lot of different hats in your career, and we would just like to know, how do you manage it all, and what does a week in your life look like? Uh, so it's it's busy, for sure. Uh, it's not easy sometimes. Um, so like you said, I'm in Canada, at, in Victoria, and that's where I teach, where I do my research. Uh, but I also have a venture, a nonprofit venture in Portugal, which is quite a bit of a distance. Um, yeah. So we have, you know, uh, weekly meetings over mm -hmm. Skype, so thank goodness for technology nowadays, right? right? It's very helpful. Um, but, you know, as much as I can, I try to go for extended periods of time to play some concerts with my sister, um, you know, on our traveling carillon. I don't mm -hmm. know if you want me to talk about it already or oh, not. Oh, yeah. But oh, no, definitely. We'll sure. get, get into that soon. <laughs> <laughs> so did you want me to talk a little bit about the evolution, how we got there, maybe? Or, yeah. Yeah? You, yeah, we should talk about Seco then. Okay, <laughs> great. you want to tell us more about that? Sure, yeah. So we're kind of going back in time. I think it's no, probably yeah, better to fine. go forward. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so maybe I should start with how I started in music. Mm -hmm. So at heart, I'm a musician. I'm mm -hmm. a, a performing artist, um, although I don't t perform as many concerts nowadays mm -hmm. just because, you know, uh, busy life of mm -hmm. an assistant right. professor. Um, but I, I started learning how to play the piano when I was four. Mm -hmm. Uh, my sister was also learning music at the time. She's seven years older than me, uh, so she was al already learning music, and so I wanted to learn music as well. So I started with the piano, learned a number of instruments, um, couldn't really decide which one. At some point, I think I was learning about 10 or 12 uh, instruments. It was pretty crazy, yeah. You know, organ, drums, guitars, electrical guitars, wow. bagpipes, all of that. Bagpipes. I know. Yeah. That's a whole other podcast. I know, yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and so eventually, uh, uh, my sister started learning this weird instrument, the carillon, mm -hmm. uh, because there was a, an open class that uh, started at the uh, Gregorian Institute in Lisbon, where we, we learn mm -hmm. how to, uh, it's basically at the same level at the, as the conservatory, mm -hmm. uh, but it's the, with a specialization in, in Gregorian chant. So uh, that's where we're, we're going, and uh, she went into the room to see, okay, carillon, uh, I should probably see what a carillon looks like. Yeah. Uh, and so she goes into the room to see if she really wanted to enroll, and it, it's just like, weird keyboard with a bunch of sticks coming <laughs> yeah. out. She's like, this looks like a foosball machine. Uh, <laughs> she's like, yeah, sign me up. So uh, she started learning it. Uh, and then because of that, you know, I, I heard her play and practice. Mm -hmm. And um, what she saw in that room uh, wasn't actually a carillon. It was a practice keyboard. Mm -hmm. uh, so carillons are usually up in towers. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, imagine playing tuba really loud so that the whole town uh, could hear you. And then you're practicing the same uh, measure <laughs> over and over again. It would be craziness so right. we have uh, practice keyboards uh, yeah. and instead of having you know being connected to bells they're connected to metal plates so mm -hmm. xylophone kind of mm -hmm. like that and so only the room where you're in is actually where you hear the music so you mm -hmm. can keep practicing so that's yeah. what she saw and that's where she learned that's usually where you, we learn Eventually, uh, a few months later, the professor took the students to the real carillon, so mm -hmm. we could actually, so they could actually uh, experience what it was, because it's a very different action, right? It's much heavier to play. Mm -hmm. Um, and I went with her, and I was—I remember—I was nine years at the at the time, and we go to this very old palace uh, from the 18th century, mm -hmm. uh, go up the stairs, and we could hear the carillon playing because the professor was already there. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what is this? Yeah. Um, and then it turns out that you actually go inside the instrument, so mm -hmm. it's one of the probably the only uh, instrument in the world where you play it being inside of mm. the instrument. So you're completely surrounded by all these bells and frequencies and it's super awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's how I decided to uh, start learning the carillon. Uh, my sister was actually my first teacher, mm -hmm. which is, you know, created a, um, a, a good uh, connection between us. Right. And then eventually she went to Belgium to study to, for, uh, to get a degree at the, um, um, it's the oldest carillon school in the world. Mm -hmm. It's still, um, you know, existing today, and you know that's usually where you go to get your degree. You can also do it in the Netherlands. At least at that time, you had those two options. Mm -hmm. So she went to Belgium. Then I followed on her footsteps too. Went to Belgium uh, as well. We got our degrees, and eventually we're faced with a problem in Portugal, which is there is no permanent position for us to be an official carilloner mm -hmm. with a paid job. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, oh, okay. Well, what do we do? And so uh, we were like, well, you know what? 
why don't we, you know, just get our own carillon? <laughs> <laughs> so we started imagining a carillon, but there was, so there were several, Okay, just to give you a little bit yeah. of background, I was okay. going to engineering school uh, mm -hmm. at the time too. I thought I was going to become an engineer. My sister was also going to uh, engineering school. My dad is an engineer, so it's really a family of musician mm -hmm. engineers. Um, and so we uh, realized that there were several problems, you know, issues with the carillons. Mm -hmm. So if you look at a piano, uh, the piano has developed probably as much as it can develop. Mm -hmm. You know, you play it, the action is there, everything's perfect. Um, in the carillon, especially in carillons in Europe, where the mechanics are a lot older, um, what happens is that sometimes you'll see caroliners perform, mm -hmm. um, and they, you know, start bruising their fingers. Eventually, there's blood dripping. I know it's pretty gory, <laughs> <laughs> and, but Things but no one, about. yes, absolutely, <laughs> no one questions it either because uh, when you go through the program, that's completely normal. That's yeah. what happens. It's just how it is, and no one questions it. Um, and so we wanted to kind of think. Um, the three of us that think through the me mechanisms mm -hmm. and what can we do to reduce friction because the problem is that there's lots of moving parts mm -hmm. and each part adds friction to the whole right and so where can we reduce friction so there's you don't need as much strength and then you don't end up transferring yeah. all of that energy into your own hands and bruising yourself mm -hmm. Um, so, of course, uh, that was actually more of my sister and my dad's crazy ideas. Mm -hmm. So they were like looking at the mechanisms, you know, with drawings and things. Um, eventually there was um, a competition in Portugal at, uh, in 2004 for uh, innovative ideas. Mm -hmm. And it could be in any industry. And we were like, you know what, let's just go. The, the, the worst thing that can happen is that maybe we hear a no. Um, so we submitted a project for a traveling carillon because we wanted to solve those problems, making the mechanisms lighter. Uh, we also wanted people to know how the carillon is played yeah. because another problem that we would face, we'd be, we would be faced with sometimes is people don't know how the carillon is played in Portugal because mm -hmm. there is not a big tradition. I mean, mm -hmm. we have two carillons from the 18th century, but there's no courses, and mm -hmm. so a lot of people don't know what it is. They might hear the bells in the tower. They sometimes assume, oh, maybe it's a computer or a mechanical yes. system. It's not really a person. And then we say, no, no, but we play the carillon. Yeah. Um, and then they would say, oh, so what do you mean? You're, you're like hunchback, and you know, you're <laughs> jumping from rope to rope? We're like, <laughs> we don't look like hunchback. <laughs> We've heard that several times. Uh, oh so we gosh. wanted to change that too, so we could teach um, you know people how it's played, mm -hmm. so people could see the the caroliner in action as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, yeah, so we put those two ideas together. The other thing was uh, usually carillons um, and the ones that we had at the time are in big cities. Mm -hmm. And so if you do not live in a city, maybe you can't, you don't have the option or the possibility to go to the big city, you don't get to hear a carillon, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we asked ourselves, well, how about instead of having the people come to the carillon, how about taking the carillon to the people? Right, yeah, and then solve the other problems too. And uh, you know, let's just propose an innovative uh, traveling carillon mm -hmm. and so that's that was the project back in 2004 uh, we submitted our uh, project and we won first prize first time that music awesome. ever won yeah so we were super happy and it was 50,000 euros so we were oh. super happy but it wasn't enough yeah, it was right. not enough at all because mm -hmm. it's you know it's a big instrument so um, so what we did is we started trying to find different ways of getting sponsorship. So we mm -hmm. contacted individual people uh, or organizations. Mm -hmm. So we here starts the um, having to think about the business side of things, the mm -hmm. marketing mm -hmm. of things that we kind of struggled a little bit. Uh, but we tried to find creative solutions for the, the, the problem. And so, um, you know, in a bell, if you cast, uh, you know, a saying, a little saying around it, mm -hmm. it's there forever. Mm -hmm. um, so we could go to organizations and say, hey, if you put your logo oh, on it, oh, yeah. It's like carving the and the it's it's there forever. Something. You just yeah. do one payment, one time payment, yeah. and then the traveling carillon is actually traveling. It's not in a tower, mm -hmm. so people are actually going to see the logo. Yes. So that's one why we had to persuade people or yeah. organizations to, um, you know, sponsor us. Um, some individuals too, maybe they wanted to honor uh, a family member or someone. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, bells like that as well. Um, so, but you know, after a few years, that still wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. So um, in 2013, uh, we applied for a grant in uh, in Europe, but in located in Portugal, mm -hmm. and it's a the European network for rural development. Mm -hmm. um, and our goal was to bring the music to um, 
not not urban areas in mm -hmm. Portugal. So take it to the country, travel throughout the whole country, and bring in you know culture and music to mm -hmm. smaller towns. Mm -hmm. And so we got a grant for that too. Uh, so we were ecsta ecstatic. Yeah, we <laughs> we got money. Yes, uh, two hundred thousand euros. Oh, yeah, wow. we were like woo. It wasn't enough. <laughs> it still wasn't enough. So uh, eventually, we, we were like, you know, let's just get a loan, see mm -hmm. if we can get approved mm -hmm. for the remainder of the, the amount that we needed, which was 69,000 euros. Wow. And we got it. And that's why we needed to buy the truck. Because once you have that traveling care loan, mm -hmm. you also have to think about transporting, yeah, it. transporting it. And we didn't even think about all of these details yeah. when we, you know, that's part of the craziness of, uh, I think, being a musician or an artist in general. You don't actually think about all of the pieces that yeah. are going to come afterwards, but you're just very passionate about something and you just go for it. Um, and then you realize along the way, oh, wow. And if you knew all of this in advance, maybe you would be like, mm, I, I don't know. It yeah. sounds like a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually think that's a great segue to yeah. talk about how you think, you know, because you research arts and entrepreneurship yep. in particular, um, how do you feel like entrepreneurship in the arts world is different than, say, if you were develop developing right. a product, you know, selling something that people would purchase? So there's lots of similarities, and, and that's why I actually jumped into business. So mm -hmm. uh, I started in a career in the paths. I was uh, studying engineering, realized engin engineering wasn't really my thing mm -hmm. uh, in my early 20s, and when we got all of this money from the first prize, uh, we realized, okay, we're a family of engineers and a family of artists. Uh, and no one, none of us actually has any business knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, really basic stuff like marketing and uh, strategy and so forth. So, uh, I was the youngest one, so we decided, Sada, you're going to get an MBA. Okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> so, at the time, I was uh, finishing my master's in music uh, at uh, Missouri State University. My professor was actually uh, an alumni, an alumnus from uh, Michigan. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so. Um, uh, so I yeah so I got my degree and I realized uh, you know I'm not really being given all the tools that I need to manage my own career. I learned mm -hmm. a lot about um, you know music and aesthetics and so forth, mm -hmm. you know music degree. But then I am out, I graduate, and I'm really missing all of this you know marketing knowledge, strategy, basic accounting, and all of that. So uh, in order to learn that, so I could start my own uh, business with my family, um, I had to go get an MBA, which took me three years to do because mm -hmm. I didn't have any previous business knowledge. And then from there, I fell in love with the philosophy of management mm -hmm. and decided to go for my PhD, seeing an opportunity that, you know, we need to bridge worlds, right? So there's always, you know, disciplines seem to be contained in silos. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, I wanted to break those walls and having background in business and in music, I right. figured that I could probably do that, right? Um, because I could see business people are not talking to the artists, and the artists are mm -hmm. not really talking to the business people, mm -hmm. so how can we uh, change this? So, and I mean, there's, of, of course, um, um, you know, things have changed a little bit. Uh, so uh, when I got my master's in music and my bachelor's and so forth, I didn't learn anything about management, uh, but schools are getting at the forefront of that problem mm -hmm. and solving that. I mean, we have the example of the Excel program, right? right? Which is a great, we need this. This is the type of stuff that we need. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some um, uh, management uh, arts, management in arts programs yes. getting started. Yes. So things are changing and thank goodness. So one key idea um, that I've noticed, so I've done a lot of research with arts entrepreneurs, not just my uh, own business. Mm -hmm. Part of my dissertation was actually on my family business and the struggles that we go through. But I also studied other arts entrepreneurs, uh, guitar uh, luthier, mm -hmm. uh, mixed media artists, sculptors, and so mm -hmm. forth. And one common theme that I saw was the idea that um, there's the notion if you sell, you're selling out, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's not necessarily the case because mm -hmm. you need to sell your work uh, in order to uh, you know, sustain your artistic yeah. activity so Absolutely. that you can do uh, what, uh, what you're really passionate about and what you wanna do, continue mm -hmm. doing for the future. For example, um, so an artist developing an artwork uh, or a musician putting a, a performance together, um, there's a lot of commonalities. You're, you're kind of always thinking, imagining the audience. You're putting a recital together, mm 
-hmm. you're thinking about the reaction uh, that mm -hmm. the audience is going to have. You pick the pieces that are actually uh, going to match with the audience that you have. I think that's particularly important in Carillon mm -hmm. um, because you know everyone can hear you, right? So a lot <laughs> of times you have to pick a variety of pieces yes. uh, so everyone is happy yeah. at least for a few minutes. Um, so that's really, I think it gets to the aesthetic value, mm -hmm. right? So it's not um, just important in business. So think about an iPod uh, mm -hmm. or an iPod. That's outdated. An, <laughs> uh, an iPhone. <laughs> okay. Um, we're interacting with it, and yes. in a way, there's a lot of design thinking that goes into it. Mm -hmm. uh, how you interact with it, how easy it is to use, mm -hmm. and then the development of a community of users that support each other right. in, you know, continuing and sustaining that iPhone. Um, and it's aesthetically pleasing, right? So, um, and, and that's a phone. It's in the technology industry. Uh, the same thing goes for a painting. Uh, the same thing goes for a sculpture. Same thing for, goes for a performance, a mm -hmm. recital. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not just about economic value. And um, sometimes that's the focus uh, um, in entrepreneurship. A lot of times people think, oh yeah, you're just thinking about how much money you can make or entrepreneurs. Right, yeah. The entrepreneurs, uh, if, if you're an entrepreneur, it means, oh, how, how much money can I make uh, with this idea, right? There are entrepreneurs like that, and they are very successful, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they're very inspirational, some of them. Steve Jobs uh, was very inspirational mm -hmm. in his actions, right? And he has changed the world completely. Mm -hmm. um, but there is more to entrepreneurship, uh, I believe, than just the technology industry, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why I try to bring attention to arts uh, mm -hmm. in the, uh, the arts industry, because there is a lot that we can learn there that can be transported to other industries. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why is because artists are uh, very used to self-reflection. Mm -hmm. So really thinking about, OK, what is it that I'm doing when you're practicing, when you're doing a piece, and then thinking about that imagined customer mm -hmm. or the imagined audience, the Im imagined uh, public. Um, and from there, um, you know, they can reflect and then also teach it to others. Because one way that we have to support ourselves a lot of times is by teaching uh, students. Mm -hmm. And so you don't not only understand all of these creative, complex creative processes that are going on, but you're also used to explaining it to students. And so uh, when you interview uh, arts entrepreneurs, a lot of times they're able to explain things that are quite complex to explain. Mm -hmm. um, I've interviewed engineers, some engineers, not all engineers, I'm talking, of <laughs> course, generally. <laughs> but some, uh, some engineers will have a harder time uh, explaining unconscious processes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, more of the creative uh, complexity that we're used to reflecting upon, just because we're used to it, right? Mm -hmm. And so, of course, from business, we can learn a lot uh, from the artists, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Um, actually, I wanted to hear a little bit more about um, what you think about aesthetic value, because you mentioned mm -hmm. that a couple times. Um, and I would love to know more what that is. Really. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it's actually really <laughs> hard to define. I uh -huh. think I always have a hard time. So, but it's any any value that is involved with the senses mm -hmm. and in creating emotions in people, uh, and that's important because that's how you captivate people to believe in you by your iPhone. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just about you know the performance, uh, but really creating a community of stakeholders and end users that sustain your business activities. Mm -hmm. Right. So anything with emotions you I was just listening to to a concert with the uh, Oregon conference and it was beautiful and the mm -hmm. aesthetics of it you can feel it in your body uh, and you get goosebumps mm -hmm. and that's a static value right mm -hmm. and a lot of times it's co-created because not necessarily that it's two people doing it but it's the musicians thinking if I do this I'm going to affect the audience in a certain way I'm going to elicit elicit certain mm -hmm. emotions and that's really that co together yeah, yeah. synthesizes absolutely mm -hmm. yeah. and I see how that plays into the the Carillon as mm -hmm. well when you're traveling Carillon. Yes, yeah. So I have a random question. Mm -hmm. Where do you store the Carillon? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Another problem that we, another thing that we actually didn't think through <laughs> when we started. Uh, but we, so um, when we got the traveling Carillon and we, or we were about to, to get it, uh, we tried to find a place in Portugal that would believe in us. And mm -hmm. there's a, 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 a town in Portugal, it's about an hour away, Constancia. Um, and the mayor really believed in us. This was before we even had the real thing, which yeah. is hard to believe. You know, when you come up with a very crazy idea and try to explain, it's a Carillon. And they're like, what's a Carillon? <laughs> it's in a truck and it travels around. around. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's hard to, 
uh, you know, make people believe you. So yes. we heard lots of no's, yes. but this specific mayor, she completely believed in us, mm -hmm. and she's very much uh, for the arts, uh, and uh, she was always very supportive. And the good thing, so yeah, so we located our organization there, mm -hmm. our nonprofit. Um, and the good thing about that lo location is that there's an army base uh, oh. right next door in the next town. Um, and so uh, we have a protocol with the city hall mm -hmm. uh, that they allow us to store it there. So, you know, mm -hmm. you have the security because it's an army base. Um, and, and so it's safe, it's, it's there and it's protected because oh, otherwise I'm not sure how we would do it. <laughs> yes. a creative solution. Yeah, it yeah. was, but it also shows the importance of community, right? Yes, because yes. it's not, uh, and that's something else that um, I think bus the business world can also learn from uh, artists. It's, mm -hmm. we come together, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's really that uh, power of community really helping uh, mm -hmm. unique things happen. I think that's super mm -hmm. important. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is this has been a fantastic conversation. <laughs> okay. I think that's all the time we have. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, you know, is there any way that people can find out more about your organization or more about you? Any websites that you might refer yes. them to? Yes. So we have, uh, so we're on Facebook. We have Sic Constancia. Mm -hmm. So C I. CO, yeah. Constancia, that's the name of the town. We'll link it in the description. Yeah. Okay, too. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also have a blog. It's c currently under construction because we're actually we're moving into a website. Mm -hmm. uh, the Carillon itself has a Facebook page too, so you can follow it. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> we went to Barcelona last year and we were wow. kept taking pictures. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so Facebook, the regular social media uh, mm -hmm. and email. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so perfect. much. Perfect. Yes, of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.